Our gospel for this Sunday comes to us from the 21st chapter of the gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, back all that not that long ago, this is called, you know, something like the 512th Sunday after Pentecost, you know, kind of thing. But it used to be referred to as the Sunday before end times. And next Sunday was end time Sunday. Yes, the church looked forward to the end times. And that's not because we're a bunch of sick, twisted, you know, fatalists. It might have something to say about how our understanding of the end times has changed. And here Jesus is in Jerusalem, and he's, they're observing the Temple Mount, and Jesus makes an observation. Now, when some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when, one not, when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not immediately follow. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. They will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will all be hated by all because of my name. Not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance you will gain your souls. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O oh Christ. Yeah, it's one of those things where you listen to it and you go, well, praise? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Well, I guess we need to unpack this a little bit. You know, one of the things is, you know, we, there's many ways in which we think the world is going to end. I mean, this is, you know, you know this, this is one image that Jesus is using. He's speaking very directly about what is going to happen in Jerusalem and to his immediate followers. The next paragraph he talks about when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies. Okay, this is the Jewish revolt in 70 AD. He's talking, you know, he's talking in the near future. Now, that's not to say that there's not things to learn from this. There's lots of ways the world ends. For example, I understand this is an issue for some people as they get older. A person commented that as they were leaving their part-time job, they all of a sudden gave themselves a desperate pat down looking for their keys. They were not in their pockets. Went back, looked, found nothing. Person thought, maybe I left them in my car. So went to the parking lot searching for their car. Could not find their car. This person's spouse had scolded them repeatedly about forgetting the keys in the ignition, and immediately they thought the car had been stolen. Well, no car in the parking lot. person felt that they had no other option but to call the police and report their car as stolen. Well... Then they called their spouse and said, um, sorry, you kept telling me not to leave the keys in the ignition. Car is stolen. I left my car, uh, keys in that car and it's gone. There was a period of silence. 
And the spouse says, are you kidding me? I dropped you off. <laughs> well, come and get me. I will, as soon as I convince this cop that I didn't steal your car. <laughs> I'm sure each and every one of us can think of some moments in time when you thought the world ended. It could be a divorce. It could be a sudden firing from a job. It could be a, you know, a breakup of a significant relationship you thought was good. There's lots of ways in which all of a sudden we may feel as if the world has come to an end. When it's very difficult to see anything but rubble. Not one good thing standing on another. I'm often asked more and more recently, but throughout my 20-year career, Pastor, do you think we're in the end times? Do you think the world is going to end? Yes. Yes, I do. And no, not in the way you are thinking. Because this is one of the things we know. The world will end. We know things will change. But the world is not going to end how we think it is. How do we know that? Because he told us. There's all of these things that are going to happen. But then first there's these other things. But notice that the first thing he says when he's challenged about what are the signs and when will this occur is beware of people coming and telling you, I am he, and the end is near. Remember back in 2012? There was this guy who was a Christian radio host out of California. He got so many people. They got billboards and stuff like that. People were giving up their jobs and moving into the cities. The world was supposed to end something like May 15th. You know, and then the final judgment was sometime in October. And there was these billboards. I'm in, I'm in central Wisconsin. There was actually a billboard between Fond du Lac and Oshkosh telling us to get our lives in order because the world is going to end. Then May 15th come. May 15th goes. And then the news came out that, well, the final judgment has been given, just the world's going to end in October as scheduled. And I'm like, because I'm a smart aleck, some of you know this, I'm like, okay, so if the final judgment has been rendered, the next five months are free and clear, right? It's a hall pass. You can do whatever you want. The judgment's already been made. It doesn't matter. You can't lose it. You can't gain it. Woohoo! Party on. Here's the thing that drives me most nuts about that whole situation, though. This was his sixth time declaring the end of the world. What? They finally thought, what, the second, third time was a charm? But how, what that did to people. People's livelihoods were ruined. People were made afraid and anxious because this guy supposedly had worked out the math, finally, sixth time. He's still doing it. In college, we saw this ad. The world was going to end on a Thursday. No, it was a Wednesday. No, it was a Thursday. It was a Thursday. It was this little ad in the community newspaper in Waukesha, Wisconsin. It basically said, the world is going to end. Get your affairs in order. The true, the true believers will all be gathered in Gary, Indiana, where the spaceships were going to come and save you from the rapture. I'm like, wow, the 60s were good to you, weren't they? Gary? All right. So being the pious, very reverent college types we were, the day before we had a party, entitled, It's the End of the World and We Know It, and I Feel Fine. If 
you know that R.E.M. song at all. Well, needless to say, when the world was supposed to end, we weren't feeling so fine, but the world didn't end. What got our attention was a half-page ad. A week later, there was an eight-page ad that said, due to circumstances beyond our control, the end of the world has been postponed indefinitely. <laughs> now, <laughs> the cost of that one was a few brain cells. But again, how often do we worry about what's going to happen at the end of the world because somehow, somewhere along the line, we have taken the God who came and proclaimed Jesus as the embodiment of his love and grace into the boogeyman. Jesus is coming. Quick, everyone look busy. Why is that? Is it easier to motivate someone by fear and threat? Really? You know, but how often people keep coming to me more and more. Do you think this is the end of the world? No. But I saw on the news, do yourself a favor, change the channel. We have, a tw we have 24 hour news programs that seem to do the same. 45 minutes of news over 24 hours. How much do we know about what's happening in Africa or Australia or Asia? But oh my God, we've got to obsess about this or that or the other thing. And here's the news flash for you. If you are a disciple of Jesus Christ and what you consume, if you know, through, your, you know, through newspapers, magazines, TV, whatever, makes you fear or hate your neighbor, your God is the boob tube. They won't be with you through the tough times. They'll just tell you about it repeatedly until you feel even worse about it. Because that's the other promise Jesus, that's the promise Jesus gives us throughout all of this. Don't get obsessed about preparing. Don't get obsessed about worrying. I'm going to be with you. We, as followers of Jesus Christ, know most powerfully God's love and grace through the cross. That was the end of the world. At least the way our world likes to think. We're going to take care of you once and for all. Done. End of story. Roll credits. Uh, uh, uh. Not even death stops God. Love wins. And that's what we're called to be a part of. What we're called to proclaim in word and deed. The kingdom is near. Jesus said that repeatedly. The kingdom is near. But how did he tell his disciples to go and share that? By going out to people and saying... You're going to hell? No. You were to go out and say, peace, be with you. That was it. Peace, be with you. We were to be people of peace. People of reconciliation and love. People of compassion and hope. That no matter what may be going on around us, we know that new life is coming. No matter what may be happening around us, we know we're not alone. No matter what may be coming, we know God wins. The world may end. 
but the love of God doesn't. Failure, death, destruction, things of our world are opportunities for God to bring about new life, resurrection, and new hope. May we remember as we gather around the table this gift of grace and love that is a foretaste of the feast to come. It is a proclaiming of the nearness of the kingdom and it is a reminder of the fact of the gift of God that truly brings about new life. And may that strengthen us as we go out into this world. Peace be with you. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen.